mean to be a caddis fly because caddis flies, I got sticks in my boots. <laughs> caddis flies build mobile homes out of sticks or rocks. I actually have a picture here of a caddis fly. This little guy. This little guy has his home made of rocks. And you can find them right here in Lake Jonas. shows on Netflix, anything like that. Sometimes I get into that. <laughs> I also have a live example of a caddis fly here, and this one I found from Lake Jonas too. So we can, I'll show this around. This one he made his home out of sticks. He's in the sticks. Yeah. <laughs> he uses it for protection. Predators. They, 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 they live in water. They do. They live in water for part of their life. Yes. Yeah. So the little guy is actually inside of the stick. Well, hello. My name is Alicia Splinter, and I am an environmental educator here at Schmeekley Reserve. I have always had a love for water and all the different critters that live inside of it. And actually, in my future, I hope to get a degree in marine biology or marine science education. So let's dive right in. Today, we are going to be learning all about invertebrates and what makes them so important to our biology and our lives here at Schmeekley Reserve. All right, so. By raise of hand, who here knows what is an invertebrate? Do you know? I see some hands, right? Yeah, have you ever heard the word invertebrate before? <laughs> All right, someone who raised their hand, can someone explain what is an invertebrate? I said somebody. <laughs> yeah, do you guys know it? No. No? Anyone want to explain? <laughs> It's a critter without a backbone. It is! Excellent! <laughs> it is an organism without a backbone. It would be kind of like if we didn't have a backbone. Can everyone wiggle around? <laughs> yeah! It's kind of like if we didn't have a backbone, just like what they do, what they have. And did you know that 95% of organisms on the earth are actually invertebrates? Which means that having a backbone, that's pretty rare and you should be proud of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not a lot of us have it. So I also have some more examples of invertebrates that I found right here in Schmeekly when I was doing some more research. I have a dragonfly nymph, and I'll show this around as well. And I have a giant water bug. So let's talk. I'll bring around, oop, they're a little hard to see sometimes. Our dragonfly nymph first. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> yes, they can get really big. Yeah, they, they spend a lot of their life in the water. You want that one better? And then they grow wings and yep, they come out of the dragonfly. And these guys are actually predators, which means they will eat other living organisms. See them in there? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, he's not alive. goodness. <laughs> that is. And then the other one I have is a giant water bug. Has anyone heard of a giant water bug? You have? What is a giant water bug? Can you explain? They're giant and they go in the water. You know what? You're right. That is a really good definition. They are. They can get super big. They can get almost this big, right? And they have huge pinchers. I'll pass this guy around. This guy is on his belly. 
but you can still see them pretty good. Oh, hi, Alicia. Hi. <laughs> see them in there? So, giant water bugs are actually really mean. Are they the ones that are in the swimming pool? How are they mean? Well, I'll let you know how they're mean. So, they have giant pinchers in front of their body, and they inject venom into their prey. And when they do this, they paralyze their prey's body. <laughs> so, the giant water bog is actually also sometimes called the toe biter. So beware when you go swimming in lakes or ponds and you feel something biting your toe, it could be a giant water bug and they hurt very much, so be careful. And your toe could potentially become paralyzed. So yeah, that critter was found right here in Schmeekly. <laughs> don't swim in Schmeekly, you don't like jokes. <laughs> Moral of the story. So now that we've seen some of our examples here, Let's take a look at our four groups of invertebrates. So, we have our first group. Ah, called the grazers. Our grazer group consists of many different invertebrates. But the two I have pictured here is the snail and the ripple beetle. It can be a tiny little beetle. Right now, I'm netting my car. Mm -hmm. What was that? I am netting my car. A net? Uh -huh. Do you search for invertebrates? Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Grazers like to graze along the bottom of lakes and collect their food. They're kind of like really hungry people who just like to eat everything they see. Look at this. Can everyone graze with me? Let's eat. Can everyone graze? Awesome. <laughs> Our second one is the shredders. And the shredders, what do you think they do? Shred. Shred, yeah, they do. The two I have pictured here is the caddisfly and the stonefly. So we just saw our caddisfly, right? We saw two examples of the caddisfly, the one with the stone and the one with the wood. So these guys love to shred up leaves and other things found at the bottom of lakes and eat them up. So can everyone shred with me? All right, let's come up here and shred. Awesome, just like those shredders, good job. And let's get into our third, almost there, collectors. Yeah. <laughs> the two I have pictured here is the mayfly and the crane fly. You might see a crane fly on top of the water. It kind of looks like a spider. Yeah, they like to fly. And these guys, just kind of like in their name, they like to collect. Now, I'm sure everyone here likes to collect different things. I personally love to collect snow globes, and my family can attest to that. <laughs> I have a bunch of snow globes. <laughs> so, let's all collect together like we are collecting our favorite thing. Collect! Awesome! Good job! And one more, our final group is the filters. Filters, yeah, it's, it's a word, it's a big word, <laughs> big mouthful. The two filters I have here is the crayfish, which we will talk about a little because he's special, and the hydra. I heard about did you hear about crayfish? Yeah, yeah you do they, find them. They pinch you sometimes. They do pinch you, yes. <laughs> so the filterers, they like to... What do you think they like to do? Filter. Filter. <laughs> yeah, their name is pretty obvious. They love to filter the different particles in the water. 
So a hydra here, they are sessile, which means they do not move. Kind of like coral and coral reefs, they do not move. So they like to just sit there and just filter everything. Can everyone filter with me? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a vacuum cleaner. How it sucks things up, but they filter things out. So they only eat what they need. Now that we know a little bit more about why invertebrates are different, all different, and why they're kind of all the same as well, and what they are, let's play a little game. Are you all ready? I see some, I see some people over there. I think you're getting a lot antsy, right? You want to start, you want to stand up and play a game. <laughs> all right, so if everyone wants to stand up or we can sit in this kind of formation over here, six feet apart from your group, please, and we'll form a circle. So let's form a circle around this tree. All right, great. So we are going to be playing a game called the Web of Life. And the Web of Life is very important. Has anyone heard of the Web of Life before? No. No? Yeah. Why is the Web of Life important? I said your hands. You know why the Web of Life is important? Connects everything together while we're That's a Yeah, perfect word, connect. So we are all going to be a certain part of our different, of our world. So I will pass out cards to all of you. They have all been sanitized. All right, how about you guys? All right, so everyone, I am going to be the sun, which is the center of our ecosystem, right? Everything comes from the sun. And I am going to give my energy to one person in our ecosystem. So let's see. Hmm. I think I will give my energy to... Let's go with the sun! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have our scud. And before we start, everyone, can everyone go around and read out loud what critter they have? Let's start with our scud over here. What do you guys have? We have the scud, and they can eat just about anything, living or dead. Um, they also clean and are beneficial to water bodies and keeping things tidy. Awesome. Let's go this way. Uh, crayfish are scavengers that eat dead animals and plants, materials such as algae found along the bottom of water bodies. Crayfish are cousins to lobster, and live in every continent except Africa and Antarctica. Awesome. And I have caddisflies. They're known for making mobile homes out of small twigs or rocks to protect themselves from predators. They typically eat fallen leaves or algae when they are larvae and help them grow. Mayflies survive by eating algae and other debris found on rocks nearby. Once they age up, Adult mayflies can live up to two days if they are males, or five minutes if they are females. <laughs> All right. I have the dragonfly nymphs. They feed on a variety of living organisms, ranging from small fish to mosquito larvae. Dragonfly, dragonfly nymphs live in the water for four years before transferring, transforming into an adult dragonfly. I have the bluegills. Bluegills are known for eating insects and other invertebrates, such as worms. Once becoming adults, female bluegills can lay up to 60,000 eggs. I have the giant water bug. The giant water bug feeds on just about anything that moves. From tadpoles to crayfish, the giant water bug attacks its prey with two sharp pinchers, which inject a poison and paralyze its prey. I have a, uh, a bass. Bass feed on other fish species, along with crayfish and insects. Once a bass reaches adulthood, males are responsible for making a nest, and females can produce 2,000 to 4,000 eggs. I've got frogs. Frogs feed on invertebrates such as worms and snails, and you may see frogs hopping around at night, and they're actually one of the most intelligent amphibians and have big brains. Alright, before we continue, we do have two visitors coming through. So make everyone aware they're gonna cross. No problem. 
All right. Uh, okay, so we have tadpoles in there, known for eating duckweed along with other algae that they might find. After about 14 weeks, the tadpoles transform into little frogs where they then eat insects. Um, we also have painted turtles. Painted turtles feed on aquatic vegetation, algae, and other living organisms such as fish and insects. Painted turtles have no teeth, hence they have strong jaws with ridges which help them bite into their food. We have algae. Algae is a food for many aquatic invertebrates, including caddis flies, mayflies, and even crayfish. The sun is vital for algae growth as it is needed to make their own energy. I got leaves. These are <laughs> Leaf. Leaves are a great food source for invertebrates, such as caddisflies and mayflies. Even after falling from a tree, leaves serve an important role in the lives of other organisms. Awesome! Great! Yes. Yeah, so even though it's just a leaf or or it's just a tadpole, they are all so important. So now that we have read. The back of your card has some clues as to where you might give your energy to. For example, our stud, what do you eat? What would you like to give your energy to? Can we be eaten by something? Yeah, okay. definitely. Well, unfortunately, we were eaten by the giant water bug. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. All right. We're going to make our way over. <laughs> we're coming over. Oh, well, got it. Nope. <laughs> All right, giant water bug. Where do you want to give your energy to, or where, what would be, or what would be, I guess? A crayfish. A crayfish. Uh -huh. All right, we're coming to crayfish. Over here. Over. Oh, okay, I'm glad you said that. I swear to God. Oh. Give oh. <laughs> the trip runner up. See how good she is. <laughs> Leave it up. All right, crayfish. Where would you want to give your energy? Well, I get my energy from leaves. Yeah. And you can eat some leaves. I can eat some leaves. Yeah. So let's go to leaf. <laughs> All right, leaf. Now, what would you choose? A mayfly. A mayfly. Oh, yeah. All right. A mayfly. Other than a bluegill, right? A bass, right? 
there's a bass over there. A little one. Probably a little one. Yeah. Or, or is there a, is there a minnow around here? No. no I wasn't no, sure. No. I was like, that's okay. Let's go to a bass. Oh, yeah. You like those. All right, Beth, you're getting popular. Oh, there is a bluegill. Do you want to give us oh, a yeah, bluegill? Yeah. All right, sorry. Uh-oh. All right, bluegill. Worm, would you like to give your energy? Do you have a worm? Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. A worm? We do, but not in the community right now. What about, what else would you potentially eat? Honestly, any invertebrate? Oh. And <laughs> A mayfly? Yeah. Are you over there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. 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 You got this. Well, maybe. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> She's no frog. <laughs> who, would, who would you eat or be eaten by? Um. Oh, we got the rudder. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> You're going to have to go this way, potential. <laughs> or that way, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We're in the middle of the web of life. Where do you want to give your energy, Frog? Let's take it to the tadpole. The tadpole? Hi, All right, everybody. All right, tadpole, it's your time. What do you eat? Do you remember? What do you want to eat? Algae. 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 Algae? All right, we're coming to algae again. Do you want to go to this one? Huh? Awesome. Does everyone <laughs> have one? Yeah. Everyone has got some? Yeah, you do have two. All right. So, after after some struggle, this is what a love of life looks like, kind of, with all of our prayers. So, let's see what happens if someone comes out of the love of life. You have a lot. Can you let someone go? Oh, oh no! Look at the web. It's not very strong. What happened to the web? <laughs> what happened? Yeah, it fell apart, right? Oh. What about algae? Let's have you drop. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh my so goodness. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now, algae's gone. But let's see. What about, let's go to a really high, strong area. What happens when I press down on this? What's it doing? Back to life and changing. And it alters everything around it. So that's kind of in simple terms what our web of life here at Shemitri is doing. It is connecting everything. Web of life is so All important right. to everything within Shemitri and our lives as a whole. But now that we've learned a little bit more about all these invertebrates, let's dive into the main activity. So today we are going to be learning about and, and doing actual research with DNET. This is a DNET. Why do you think it's called a DNET? What does this look like? I heard the letter D. Yes, D nets are shaped like the letter D, hence their name. And they are very important in helping us collect invertebrates. Speaking of which, if everyone wants to take off their invertebrate card, and you can put it, and I'll actually collect them all. All right, so we will be using these D-nets today. When you hold a D-nut, you want to kind of hold it like a canoe. So we'll get one hand at the bottom, one hand at the top. And then we are going to stick our D-nut into the water, into the substrate, and kind of do like a little twirling motion back and forth in the water, in the substrate soil to collect our invertebrates. And pulled. combine glasses and either a petri dish or an ice cube tray. So, so whatever you find, you can put in there and then you can show it up all later. So 
before we do that, we are going to put water in here, okay? We're going to put a little bit of water, and then after we do our D-netting, we are going to grab our D-net with all of the gunk in here, and we are going to shake it out, okay? And I will be coming around to help anyone who needs it. And then you just wait, and you see anything you find in your pan, and anything that interests and interests you, you can collect in your ice cube tray or your petri dish, and we will share after our activity. So, if everyone wants to get in the group they came with, uh, I think you already you already all are, right? <laughs> all right, I will come in around and hand out a D net. Thank you. Are. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. All right, everyone. So, I'm going to have this group come down here, please. Along with this group, if you guys could come down here as well, the bigger group I'm putting in the bottom, and you. <laughs> and then each other group I will need individually to have their own little spot. So let's have you guys come follow me first. We're not going to go very far. Right here. Now be careful when you go down. The, the leaves may be slippery. All right. Thank you. So right down this little area. And I will be back in just a second to check on you and see what you see, what you get. And if you're not getting any luck, just keep trying. There's, there's always something in the water. <laughs> Are you getting your first dump? Oh, that's exciting. I don't have the lead in bud. <laughs> yeah, your hands might get a little wet. And you can take out big leaves if you want to. Those might be kind of... Okay, um, we didn't get it. Well, just look, the things are little. Sometimes the best thing is just to sit and wait. Yeah. And do you have tweezers? You can use the tweezers, oh, no. too. Okay, stop. Okay. Look, they're right here, honey. They're right here. Yeah, they're right here. <laughs> okay, yeah, I do And I will come around with some um, ice cube trays as well. Okay. And if you can't find anything right away, don't worry. There, there is plenty in there. Not this, but that little guy. Yeah. What do you think that is? It's um, so little. It's probably just a probably super yeah. small yeah, larvae. Do you see him? Yeah, I see him. He's moving in there. Yeah. He's very small. I would say. See, he looks bug. like a. Um, he might be a water bug. mayfly larvae or a dragonfly larvae, but he's so small I can't even see his legs. Wait, we have a magnifying glass. Oh, you do. Did you look at what that was? No. Here's an extra tweaker. <laughs> Okay. okay. Well, <laughs> this one. This one is definitely it yes. Is. It is. This is a caddisfly home, so there is a little caddisfly inside of here, and he's glued it together with the logs, so that's protective to protect him. Yeah, awesome. You can tell because it's all gluey. Yeah, it doesn't come apart very well. Cute. And their mouths are awesome too. That's upside down now. But no, it's all, ugh, it's a <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be a big frog. I saw it coming. I thought, well, I'm not gonna make a scene. And then they turned around. <laughs> he is really big. <laughs> That's a frog? This is tadpole, baby tadpole's a frog. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be a frog. It's not now, but it's a baby. Maybe to go back to first. Sure. <laughs> Let's start over here with this group. What? Can everyone hear? <laughs> we're gonna start sharing. All right, we're going to start with this group over here. What did you guys find? We found a caddisfly. Wow. Yeah. And we found boy. a little bitty bug. Let's see. Let's grab this caddisfly. Yeah, they found a big caddisfly home. Remember to make those big, big homes. Yeah, they can together. He's inside. He's inside. Yep, he's okay. a very little guy. Yep. Yeah, we found a big caddisfly over there. Big caddisfly home. Come on, we're inside here. Awesome. And then let's come over here. What did you guys find? Okay, so we got a, a minnow, a dragonfly nymph, and a tadpole. They found a lot of big things. <laughs> We're looking for deep. Yeah. <laughs> and then let's come over here. What did you guys find? Yeah. <laughs> a bath scanner? Right? And what else? Two snails. 
Snails? There's a lot of them, yeah. And you found a back swimmer? Is that one in here? Yeah. That little guy, can you see that at home? Awesome. Yeah, I'll come around with this back swimmer. They found one over there too, but this one's a live example. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, okay. Maybe this, maybe there's two. Unfortunately, there isn't one. That's okay. <laughs> It wasn't going to live much longer anyway. I'm happy to see my photo. Awesome. And then what did our last group find? What did you all find in yours? Um, we found like a mayfly or dragonfly. Nymph. Or, and there's a little bug. A dragonfly larvae. They were finding really little things over there. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you all got to experience as we wrap up here, we are going to talk about water quality and how these invertebrates are actually really good indicators of if the water is good or bad. So let's see. Which one, left or right? Let's say one or two. Which one is bad or good? Which number? This one? <laughs> yeah, this one is the bad water quality. Are we all missing up? <laughs> I know there's live critters, and we will put them back at the end. But yes, this is our bad water quality and our good. Our good water quality, animal, little organisms you might find include our caddisfly and the mayfly. So. We found both of those, right? Yeah, so I'm presuming we might be leaning towards good water quality in Lake Jonas. In bad, we have a leech and a black fly larvae. Here it is, right here. <laughs> Did we find either of those today? No. Oh, so what water quality do you think Lake Jonas has, good or bad? Good. Good, yes! Lake Jonas does have great water quality and a lot of invertebrates within the lake that help it like that and help all the Shemitah as a whole. As we wrap up and return back to our own ecosystems, I just want you all to remember all the different curiosities you found in the water and maybe some new things you learned today as well. And I'll leave you with a quote from Walt Disney that curiosity is an open door and endless possibilities are there. Thank you. Oh. Oh.